I'm really sorry that uh, Nikhil Chopra uh, could not be here today to make uh, this live presentation. My name is Nigel. I come from a small town called Sandusky in Ohio. I went to grad school with Nikhil in 2002 and 2003 at Ohio State University where uh, we developed a really good friendship. Well, one of the reasons why Nikhil is not here, well, this is what he tells me. He says that he is uh, not really very good with words, with formulating sentences around his own work. Because it doesn't, he doesn't quite have that distance and that objectivity. So, if you will allow me, a really good friend and someone who's been watching his work for many, many years, uh, to present uh, on his behalf. We'll start with this first project. It's a site-specific performance, and of course, you can see 99 hours. So uh, it was this incredibly beautiful backdrop, an incredibly beautiful setting. But what's kind of crucial to his work is sight. This is something that is important. Nikhil is primarily a performance-based artist. He comes from painting, and what he was also interested in parallelly was the theater. But the theater as an actor. Um, so while at Ohio State, I remember him taking classes in, even in the theater department. So in a way, what he did at the end of his education was wanting to bring together the theater and painting in a way to create a kind of new language. When I'm saying site, a place like San Gimignano in the middle of Italy, visiting a site before he makes a performance becomes crucial. Because the performance is being made for the site. And the performance is about the body being present at that space and reacting to where he is. What is it that the body can do in a performance that goes in a way beyond the visual arts in an art gallery space or in an institutional space? The body is fluid. It can move. It can go from place to place. It can travel. And this is what he's really excited about, is being fluid, being like water in the landscape. So, in a sense, when I say real experience, what I mean is that when you spend 99 hours in a space, you're going to get hungry, you're going to get tired, you're going to get sleepy, you're going to get weary, and you need, you're going to have to rest. And the rest and the sleep are as important to the work as the work itself is. Because if he's not resting, he's not going to be able to find the energy to go on that two kilometer walk outside of San Gimignano from where he can see. He's very aware of that, that transformative power that a performance has. So it's really kind of taking in, allowing for the day and night and for the long duration. And, and because he takes a vow of silence and because he doesn't communicate with anybody, it sort of becomes a kind of meditative, kind of pilgrimage kind of journey. There isn't, there, there's a destination in mind that he has, but he allows for the journey to make the experience. What this performance wants to highlight is um, one of the functions, perhaps, of landscape painting is for it to function as a window as for it to be a bridge between what is inside and what is outside. It is also, in a way, the desire for a place. It's, it's also imagining this beautiful place that you want to be in, soaking in sunshine, or feeling the viscerality of light and air, and, and being able to almost breathe it in, in, in the painting. Nikhil was kind of a, a like air, like kind of moving, um, not fixed, not hard, but soft. It's a very particular town that's 
that's, you know, at, at, at nine o'clock every morning, there are busloads of tourists that arrive, and they're dropped off at one point in, in the city, in San Gimignano, and they pretty much walk in that one direction through the city, and at seven o'clock in the evening, it's empty. So just taking in those streets at night and walking through them and inhabiting, one of the things is I think that he's really interested in is this idea of inhabiting spaces, claiming spaces, living in a space and making his space and making that space his own. So he kind of walks through San Gimignano, not as a tourist, but as a kind of citizen, as to say, by doing this piece, I now, as a result, own San Gimignano and this is my city, and I will walk through it uh, with, with grace and with pride. In a way, it's a, it's a kind of comment also on early landscape painting and it's a kind of early etchings that one would see of British colonials uh, coming to places like India um, and making drawings in a way as trophies. When you make a drawing of something that you look at and you've made it as you've seen it, you kind of feel like you own it. And here we see the final transformation once all the drawings are made. Now, him wearing these drawings, this is, these are one of the first few times that he's actually working with embodying the drawing. So the drawings are actually not just limited to walls, but are, are worn as, as, as costume, where each tower, in a way, becomes each lung, you know, that, and, and the clouds kind of become the air that fills his body. So the body becomes the landscape, or becomes the picture, or the picture becomes the body. One of the things that I find quite interesting, and I've, I've often spoken to Nikhil about, is that how performance, in a way, has the power to call the weather. <laughs> the, they're old rituals that were done around bringing the clouds and bringing the rain. For me, I believe that his performances have a certain ritualistic power to bring sunshine or bring in clouds. So in the beginning, what we saw was him sitting in this glorious Tuscan landscape, making a picnic scene, enjoying and basking in the glory of the sun, making a drawing. And when that drawing is done, he's walking through the streets, soaking wet, making snarling, crying, bitter faces at the audience as they walk past him. These performances, as you can tell by now, are, or maybe you can't tell by now, but are planned to an extent. There is, in a way, a blueprint. There is a map of where he's going to go. But a large part of, part of that is improvisation. It is made up as he goes on. It is, it changes as his mood changes. The end of the performance, of course, he leaves <coughs> everything behind. And in a kind of almost naked Gambian gesture, walks out of the space, brings the performance to an end in a, in a kind of monk-like, austere fashion. In a way, <laughs> reflecting on life, that we are here, we live life, we make things, we make impressions, we make people, we meet people, and we go. His grandfather would make these really beautiful, small, gorgeous landscape paintings of Kashmir on paper with watercolor. But when growing up, what I had on my walls were paintings made by my grandfather and when we lost access, when he lost access to Kashmir because of the violence that, that Kashmir has brewed since 1989, um, he was not able to go back. And in a sense, those paintings reminded him 
of a kind of childhood, of going out into the landscape with his grandfather on a picnic and watching him paint. So in his performances, now we see here, which is a performance he does in Lyon, he actually goes outside with his canvas again, pitches a tent, lives in a tent, and makes a drawing. So the idea of looking at something and drawing is something that comes from an inspiration from his grandfather, which is why he creates this fictitious character called Yog Raj Chitrakar, which is directly taken from the name of his grandfather. He looks at those photographs as a kind of reference for him to embody his grandfather, because he stands like him. His body is like his grandfather's. He sits like his grandfather. He's learned from him that are not just about being a painter, but are about being a person and being, uh, developing an identity. So for this performance that you're seeing right now is a performance he does in Bombay in 2010. And this is the last, one of the last performances in a series of performances called Yograj Chitrakar Memory Drawing. Bombay is his city. This is where he spent a large part of his time. He went to college here in his early part for his early education. He lived in the city uh, as a young man. So he decides to do a walk. So the idea was to live in the city. He lived through the city by walking through it and making large drawings and open spaces in the city. But the walks are not just a Bombay performance. You can see the walks coming in and again and again and again. The idea of taking the inside out and bringing the outside in is this recurring theme. So he walks out into the center square of Srinagar dressed like his grandfather from the 1930s and starts to make a drawing of the clock tower. What happens is the police panic. They clamp down the road on both the sides. The army comes in. They frisk everybody. They try to tell him to stop the performance, but he doesn't. And he keeps going on like he cannot hear the police. <laughs> It's not just the audience that is performing when they're looking at a performance. The audience is performing too. It's not just the performer. The audience in Kashmir performed a very specific role. This is how it starts. He sort of crawls out of this bag, taking birth like a, like a, like a newborn, entering this white, pristine, untouched world and starts with making these very fluid marks. So the drawings actually have two functions. One is that of chronicling or documenting what he sees, and the second is documenting the way in which his body moves through, the sp through space. So he kind of takes that idea of lines relentless lines that he makes through the performance on these movable walls, like bogies of a train, moving back and forth and back and forth relentlessly. These, this is kind of the direction that he's headed in right now, where he's using material out of context way. What he does is he takes kind of material that one would think would be for makeup, applies lipstick not just to his body but to an entire space, um, kind of becoming a bit of a monster as well. Um, um, that's it. Thank you.